All right, y'all, we're going to talk about this Havoc Marsh Runner. It's a 1756 2023 with a 2023 60 Tatsu. First thing, we'll get into the trailer. It's a very nice steel trailer. I went with steel because where I, where I live and fish a lot, I launch in the river 90% of the time, and the currents are pretty strong. And I noticed a lot of people I know have a lot of issues with backing their aluminum trailers down in the river and they won't stay where they put them just being so light but it's a nice well-built trailer came with some nice 13 inch wheels non-skid on all the steps and fender wells um, very nice carpet all stainless hardware for it reflectors got a nice tag light on it a little roller for your transom saver nice brackets for your straps transom straps same thing on the next side non-skid on all the steps and fender wells reflector nice reflectors and lights havoc emblems all over it and it is a tennessee built trailer as well i like it a lot it's a very nice trailer i would say overall it's probably 19 foot long this is just an overview of the whole. It's got some nice rubber rub rail on the sides. High deck. The newest Marsh Runner 1756 didn't come with a mid deck option. I'm not sure if a 1656 did or not. There's a gun box, rod box, the center compartment at, your, uh, at the transom, two seats on both sides. Nice floor, it's a little dirty. Some of the camouflage is rub rubbing off on my rivets already, which is, it's expected. It gets used and gets walked on. Got some vents on the front compartments and the back compartment so everything can breathe and won't sweat too bad during the heat. Nice switch panel on the driver's side there. So it's rated for four people or 589 pounds and a 60 horsepower motor. Your front compartment here, Usually keep our life jackets and stuff in it. Got a little boy's chair in there from when he was smaller. Couldn't walk. Need to get that out of there. I'm probably going to end up moving my fuel tank and batteries up to the front. When I'm by myself, it's kind of a headache. Here we are. This is the driver's side compartment. It's a bag of fishing lures there. Had to pull out. Got some wires there. I need to zip tie up out of the way. A nice steps on the back on your transom. This is where your bilge pump pumps out. Right there at your motor there. And power and fuel go in the other side. They gave me a molar six gallon fuel tank with the newest quick connects, which are very nice. A lot better than the older ones. Came with a 800 gallon per minute bilge pump. The only complaint about it is it is not automatic. You have to switch it on and off but not too bad this is just another look from the back compartment i wish i had room to put another battery but like i said i'm probably going to move all that to the front anyways that was just showing where the bilge pumps pipe to passenger compartment it's the same plenty of space in these boats pile of storage i don't know what you could fill these up with, honestly. This is the rod slash gun box. You can see the tubes in the front compartment where the fishing poles can lay. It's full of junk right now. Little boy's life jacket, lights, navigation lights. I took that shorter backlight out of another boat of mine because the one they gave me with this boat is crazy tall. You can see there for yourself. It's almost too much. I'm scared I'm going to rip it off. Making sure I don't miss anything. Got a paddle just in case that top two wants to act up on me, which I don't think will ever happen. A little cup holder I need to put in. Got to get some T-bolts for that T-rail. The only thing I do not like about this boat is Havoc advertises it as their fishing boat, and it did not come 
with a transom, I mean a trolling motor bow mount. Let's check these lights out. This bow light is very nice. Also that bow light connection there, you pull it out and that's where all your wires from your switch panel go up to your bow. You can pull that right there and you can access any of your wires if you want to put a light bar on it or anything like that, which I plan to do later, eventually. Just gotta order me a light bar. So we'll stick that one in, we'll get one of these back lights and I'll turn it on, show you how bright that bow light is. That's the newest model there. That's the long one. That's an old, old light out of another boat. It's the same concept as any other boat. It's got the screw on the back where you can line it up so it's not a pain to get those prongs in the right position. This one did not have a, it does not have threads on it. I broke them off on pulling them out of that other boat. But you just go to your switch panel and kind of self-explanatory you hit the navigation lights both of them will come on or you can push it down just to pull that backlight on let's look at this bow light how bright it is it's amazing i've never had one so bright and i like how it's separated in the center we'll pull this short light out and show you that long one I don't know why anybody would use that unless you wanted everybody within 20 miles of you to see you coming from where you're coming from or watch you go to where you're going. I'll never use it. They gave it to me with the boat when I bought it, but it's up there. Nobody's gonna miss it. Like I said, I'm scared if I use it, I'm gonna end up ripping it off, going in a ditch or somewhere to go fishing. Come back here again we can go over that switch panel there cut them off you got your bilge pump switch here your live well switch what i don't understand you got a accessory switch what i'm gonna hook my light bar to and your courtesy light switch what i that's the switch i put my led strips on inside of my boat i did it kind of different i could have went from the front where i showed you all the wires come from but i came from the back i ran it from side to side through the back of the transom to where when I open all these hatches back here, they, they light up if I want them to. You can't see it very well in the daytime, but it lights these boxes up very well. I ordered them off of Amazon for, I can't remember, they were fairly inexpensive. You can see that strip hanging back there. I need to glue it up somehow. But it lights these boxes up very well, especially at nighttime, about the only time you'd need them. Let's turn them off and you got a 12 volt plug here for, I don't know, phone charger, spotlight, anything you could use it for. And all those are your breakers. Just in case any of those switches don't work, you can hit those buttons and it resets them all. All right, let's talk about this motor. I put a float on it because I did not like leaving the key in the ignition, but I didn't feel like pulling it off the kill switch lanyard every time. Pull this cover off. I keep a cover on it, try to keep it looking as good as I can for as long as I can. And like I said, it is a 60 four stroke Tahatsu. I like this motor a lot. Got a lot of low end power, very light. I have a 16 pitch PowerTech SCB3 three blade, three blade prop on it. It is a 10 and three quarter by 16 inch prop it runs well this is not a uh, jack and plate manual or hydraulic it is a kick plate and i put some pictures in here of me adjusting it they had it set up on the bottom hole i picked it up just to make it run better it was dragging it does have a lock on the transom i mean on the transom mount but i just used the transom saver for the motor Way I don't have to lock it and unlock it every time I want to do something with it. 
pull the hood off of this thing and show y'all how nice it is. It's pretty simple. It looks it anyway. They say it's got a lot of new technology to it, a lot of electricity in it. But hopefully we won't have to fool with any of that. It's got a, another thing. It is the lightest motor of all four-stroke 60s tiller handles you can buy. It has the best warranty. So hopefully if anything's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong within that first five years. I've only had it for four or five months now. I ordered this little hour meter off of Amazon. It comes with a double-sided back. I just stuck it to my tiller handle there, ran the wire through a hole in the bottom of the bowl of the motor, ran the wire up through there, around the bottom of the power head, as you can see, and all you have to do is wrap it around one of your spark plug wires, and it'll read the hours for you. It's very nice. Not very hard at all. What's up, little buddy? He's ready to go boat ride. Anyhow, like I said, only got six and a half hours on it so far. Barely out of the break-in period. Not 100% sure if I even did the break-in period 100% correct. It's got a lock on the motor where you can steer it or not. One thing I like about it a lot is I notice a lot of people have a lot of complaints about the older Tatsus having the trim switch by the key. Did not like that. I'm glad they put it up here. That little arrow that just popped up, I forgot to look at really well. It's a warning switch for your, if it's not cooling or oil level low or whatever. I'm going to stick a specification list up here. You can pause it and check it out. I'm not going to go through everything. There it is there. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you like the video. Thank y'all.